All right, everybody, it's been a minute. I haven't done a vlog in over a month and a half, I think. Um, anyway, welcome back to the HM Vlog. Today's topic is, is something that is, again, dear to me. I talk about it all the time. I try to make sure my action reflect the words that I'm sharing to, 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 to you guys. And it's so funny, you know, as you get older, you realize... Or you, you have a feeling that times, you know, get shorter. I mean, it's November. <laughs> the year is about to end. 2022 is gone. You know, and you realize time, you, you have a feeling that time is moving faster and faster. Actually, it's not that it's moving faster. As you get older, we, get, we become more conscious about time. And we realize that we have a very short time in this planet. So, you know, compared to when we're young, and 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 we we live life like we'll never die. But as you become more conscious and more aware of of time, then it looks much much shorter. And this particular topic is a reflection of how little time we have to make a difference. But before I get started, before I start talking about all this, I I do want to talk about the reality. And the outcome of what's happening, 2022, again, the hottest year that we ever experienced. Uh, it's getting hotter and hotter. We're breaking records. And since I'm in East Africa, I'll talk about East Africa, but global warming is affecting the world, the planet. Everybody is, 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 is not immune. And this is what's happening. And not, you know, droughts. Again, um, this particular article um, talking about the impact on rural areas, small farmers, droughts that are affecting, you know, animals, uh, especially in, in Somal uh, Somalia, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, have experienced the driest condition. This is nothing new. It's been predicted for the longest. And there's a trend happening. That's what I want to talk about. There's really a trend happening that's been discussed now by several experts. Number one, what's happening right now is investment to tackle global warming, climate change is dropping dramatically. We're in a crisis, so investors now have to watch their money. What do they do? They go where? They can make the most money as quickly as possible. Fossil fuel still very high up in the book, uh, in the stock exchange. The 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 the, the barrel. Uh, I've I've what is a hundred dollar plus per barrel now. The oil 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 price. So, investment is going down. Investors are putting the SDG goals on the back burners. And I'm not talking about just private investor, governments also. Uh, and, and this is a re report from UNCT AD. So, uh, you know, you can check it out. I'm sharing those on the link so I can talk and, and share some of those research and, and articles that came out talking about these things. And, and the investment, the drop on investment is just not temporary. It's going to go on for at least a year or two, at least as the economy gets back uh, to normal. Inflation is also a big problem. Uh, so that's going to have a huge impact on this continued global warming um, aspect of, of, of the planet. Because again, if investment is going back to fossil fuel, we're putting the SDG on the back burner, we're not really tackling global warming. So we have people now uh, that are suggesting that instead of fighting global warming, why don't we just mitigate uh, the impact? Invest in mitigation, right? Uh, to minimize the, the impact. And this is a... <laughs> I read this article, and I'll put all the links on, 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 the, on the YouTube channel uh, below for you guys to look at. 
Because I spent a lot of time researching and reading and, and trying to realize what, 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 what's our mindset. And, and, and I come to the conclusion that this is not about being logical. This is not about doing the right thing. This is also the same thing that's been going on for centuries. It's also about personal or selfish gain of people that really don't care because they know they're going to be they're going to be here for another 20, 30 years. So the problem of global warming really is not really going to impact them that much. It might impact their kids or their grandkids, but not them. So we, we as human, we are extremely selfish, right? So now we're talking about in, in, instead of trying to convince and pushing and forcing company uh, polluting this world to change their ways, reducing our CO2 emission and all those things, why don't we just prepare the people that will be impacted the most um, to prepare for the worst and just, you know, have them better prepared, basically. Uh, so instead of stopping somebody from dropping an atomic bomb, they're just going to suit a bunch of people and sell a bunch of suits so their radiation will be minimized to the individual, the planet, so on and so forth. So, again... We're not about fixing the problem. We're about mitigation now. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. This time is refocuses of adaptation technology with oil industry continue to receive billions in government subsidies. Government around the world are just, again, we, we, we just don't care about the future. We playing the short term game, and we know, we know there's gonna be a, a cascade at, at the end of this ditch, man. We know there's gonna be the impact is gonna be massive, but yet we are not changing our ways. You know, we spending. There, there was a research done on how much money was invested in in green tech, and as total, uh, was I don't know. It was I think. A few billion dollars, let's say. And one oil company, one oil company was investing the same amount I was investing in green tech uh, in, in uh, research and finding new wells and all those things. One oil company had more investment than the total uh, green tech investment around the world. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. And I, I don't know, man. I don't know about you guys, but if we don't change our ways, you know, I, I, I hope our kids going to look back and just be so disappointed, man. And, and if you guys are young in your 20s, you should look at your parents. If, you, if your dad has a, has a mom, dad has a high position in government or in a big company, they, they are failing you guys. They're literally failing you guys. You know, they really don't care. So anyway, let me keep going. Um, so, so mitigation, minimizing the impact, that's what's going on now. Basically, we don't believe anymore that we're going to change the outcome. Uh, we're probably going to get to three degrees Celsius increase. I mean, that's... That's a no-brainer. As a matter of fact, temperature is, is growing faster than predicted. So that's a no-brainer. It's going to get not only hotter, but faster. So mitigation is the only option in the short term. Changing the behavior of the big companies is no longer the focus. And, you know, um, COP27 is coming up. And Africa, obviously, has been... Uh, has been said that we'll be the most impacted continent with this global warming. And now it's the question of how Africa, the continent, the fastest growing in population, uh, the, young, the, the, younger, the youngest uh, population in the world, will be dealing with this global warming. And that's going to be the main topic at the COP27. Again, I, I, I've been to a few of those events across um, in the last 10 years, and it's always the same thing. As a matter of fact, I think I posted not long ago, every event I go to, 
the topic is the same. We package it differently. The title is different, but the outcome is the same. There's a bunch of people talking about, man, we need to do this, do that. And when they get home, they just don't do anything. So anyway, the problem now with African leaders, um, they want the West because they're the one who are polluting the most, which is true. Pay for the for, for, for the suffering the continent is, is experiencing already, but it's going to experience also in the future, even more. The problem is that model is not going to work because they don't care about Africa. <laughs> Nobody cares about the other person. Nobody does. So African leader, please wake up, man. Yes, you're not the one polluting. Yes, you're not the one causing all this. Great. But are you going to sit around and keep blaming the world and this and that? That's not going to change anything. What you need to do is come up with solutions, local solutions. They do exist. Uh, and I'll I post also, they, they do exist. There's a lot of initiatives. Local companies developing new, new ways of irrigation that are low cost. There's ancestral uh, technology. They used to exist back in the days. Um, you know, uh, and I'm not going to spend too much time. There's a lot of local innovation that need investment. You can't tell me you can't put a hundred million, a billion dollar aside for, in, for, for investment. But we're not going to do that. We want to cry to the West, waiting for them to spend the money or bring their own solution, so on and so forth. So also, our leadership in general are terrible. Not all of them, but most of them. So now what they're going to talk about is how we're going to mitigate and deal on the short term this issue so there's not a food crisis. Because it's happening, man. The food crisis is already here. It's going to scale. You know, it's going to impact even more people. And it, it's just a fact. Starvation is coming up. And when you talk about lack of food and water, when you talk about lack of food and water, you're talking about wars. And it's already ha happening, and I'm going I'm to end with this little story. Because uh, I'm working with this one of the organizations trying to find a ways to, to help them, uh, some of those refugees. So there's a region in Cameroon where water clashes are causing communities to fight among each other. Again, you know, as, as smart as we claim we are humans, we, we animals. Literally, lack of education, lack of solution on the ground to tackle this, this issue. But what do people do? Well, they think, well, guess what? I got limited resources. There's too many people. I got I to gotta get rid of some of those people. I mean, it's literally how... The, the mindset is. It's a survival mindset. Uh, I'm not here to judge because that's not my job. My job is, you know, show what the reality is happening, what's happening on the ground, what's going to be happening, what's going to get worse. If you think you're in an area where, oh, the, that problem is not there yet, it's coming. It's coming. And there's ways for you to prepare yourself. You think you're in the middle class, upper class, and all that is not going to impact you. Guess what? If the guy at the bottom of the pyramid is hungry, can't get water or eat, guess where he's going to look his food? Uh, uh, he's going to look for food at at your house. You know, crime's going to go up, and of course, there's always group of people and individuals that's going to take advantage of those uh, uh, vulnerable people. Organizing, you know, trying to blame this and this and that. So that's create war. And this story is so sad because again, every time you hear those type of stories, it's always women and, and, and children affected. And it breaks my heart, man. It breaks my heart. On top of that, of course, the media don't talk about it. Uh, people don't talk about, you know, they don't really care about when people are suffering and all, because that's not really, it's not, it's not news that you like to absorb. You prefer to get entertained to forget your problem. You don't want to add up to your stress, which I understand in a way. But, we need to wake up, guys. You know, and there's different things. There's not much you can do as individual, but there's certain things you can do as individual. You know, if if stop wasting 
your food and put it in the trash, trying to convert it to to to. Uh, um, if you have a small garden, you know um, what you call that. Uh, you can use it to to turning it into a, a bio buy your stuff to grow some food, buy your gas also, you know, so you have to convert your house into a greenhouse, number one, for those who are lucky enough. Uh, I consider myself lucky, and that's what I'm working on. I can't do a lot. I try to do a little bit. I try to, you know, do some crowdfunding to help a little bit of refugees. You can't do much by yourself. I think I can definitely do more. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely thinking around that line. But the future looks scary. The future is looking scary as hell. Now, if the population growth was not that rapid in Africa, I would be like, okay, I think we can deal up. We can deal with that problem pretty easily. But uh, we're about to be 4 billion people by the end of this century in Africa alone. One of, one of the four people will be African. Those people will need to eat, drink water, feed their kids, so on and so forth. If nothing is done, then only we failing a whole generation of, of people. But the future will look really, really scary. So anyway, check out those articles, man. Let me know what you think. There is a, there is a need of a new strategy. There's a need of looking at things drastically different. I'm not even talking about changing the, the, the big companies or the old oligarch billionaires from the oil industry, chemical industry to change their mind. That's a waste of time. Trying to educate them. They already know. They just don't care. Literally, they don't care. You know, that's, that's just the reality. They don't care. They're billionaires, millionaires. That stuff won't affect them. Uh, at least not directly. So they don't really care. But the, the social impact enterprise, entrepreneurs, the individuals, the people that see this as a reality, there needs to be a change of mindset. Because this problem can be solved, for sure. You know, it, 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 there's nothing impossible out there. And the first thing is we need to educate everybody about how to survive this global warming. How to grow food with limited access to water. How to use filtration system. Education, start with education, with our kids and all those things. You know, uh, how, how to better usage of resources. You know, all that is already, all that is already there. It's just a matter of finding the right funding to scale all that aspect. So I hope you like what I'm sharing. If if you think it's a, it's it's extremely important to to really look at this and do something about it, not just reading the news and just zap and go somewhere else, you know, please share it, share your ideas also, and let's build a community around this, you know, or join other communities around this, you know, that either need donation, need ideas, so on and so forth. This is really critical. Thank you.